Guys, here's an update for day two of the course. And if you're wondering where I am, I'm actually in Boston Commons at the moment. Um, just flew in today. So yes, technically I have finished the intensive, but um, it was pretty full on for the past five days. I haven't had a chance to um, record these updates. Uh, but yeah, I thought it'd be a nice location just to film in, in Boston Commons here. I'm in downtown in the park, um, in case you were wondering where I am. So day two, if I was to sum it up in a nutshell, is was all about making strong initiations. Uh, basically making a decision when you come into a scene about your character and sticking with it. Uh, so today, in, on Tuesday, we went into more details with, with characters, um, leading with the emotions, uh, leading with the physicality and object work. So to begin with the characters, um, there was, we did this really, really good game. Um, it's called Where Have My Fingers Been? And if you want to know how the chant goes, so everyone gets in a circle and you start off by saying, where have my fingers been? Say, where have my fingers been? Say what? And um, the first person will um, state a location and then the person to their left, in this case, um, basically a three line scene. Uh, they make up two characters. And so you might say, oh, you know, location Starbucks. And next person's like, oh, can I have a coffee, please? Or oh, no, sir. We don't serve coffee today, or whatever. But um, the point is, you do a quick three-line scene, and it's amazing um, how easy it is to come up with uh, characters. Basically, we're going around the circle, and people are coming up with all these interesting, unique characters. Um, so it was just a good exercise for demonstrating people who think, you know, oh, I don't have many um, characters I can come up with. Um, play that game, and I'm sure you'll come up with quite a few. Then we moved on to uh, emotions. So starting a scene, choosing a, a, an emotion. So we started off by just doing some quick scenes, um, choosing an emotion, and then we went further and did an exercise. Um, we chose a topic, you chose a topic either to rant about or to be really excited on and talk about. And um, so people got up on stage, started talking about this topic so they either hated it or they loved it so there's either excitement and or frustration uh, yeah and what we did is we got everyone to modulate the intensity so you normally start with a six or a seven then we got them to ramp it up to a ten and then bring it down to a, a two and a one and the reason we did that was just to show if you come into a scene and you start the scene with a particular emotion um, don't think that you have to stick there right um, so if someone comes into a scene really anxious and then you think the scene doesn't warrant that um, you're anxious that's your lens stick with that um, if the scene progresses where you're more nervous and scared then you build to a, uh, a 10 if you need to um, but if it's not that type of a scene you can pull back and if you um, become excited and happy you still have that lens of anxiousness to you you know it's always with you you made that decision you stick with it then uh, so the that emotional choice is all around the Meisner technique if you're familiar with the, the acting principles and then we moved on to physicality so uh, touching on Stanislavski and what we did for for this work to initially get into the the zone of physicality was we basically you know walked around the room um, with different um, suggestions so you know you, you feel heavy or you feel light you walk fast you walk slow um, leading with a body part right so you, you walk around the room with these physical choices and then you work out how does that make you feel um, uh, you know are you what emotions does that bring out in you when you lead with that body part or you, you walk in this manner? For example, you can be really loose or you can be really tense. You know, what does that do to your feelings? Um, so that was just a good exercise to mix it up and lead with different body parts, lead with different physicalities, and then that informed an emotion in your character. Um, so we had those two tools to use when starting scenes. You can either start with an emotion or with a physicality. And to give you an example of um, what I did with one physicality, so um, leading with the forehead, I tried that. And when, when I did that, I really 
felt like I was a thinker. I was really thinking, oh, you know, and then I thought, you know, maybe I can play a teacher or a professor or something like that. Mm. Yep, so that was leading with the physicality. Sorry, I'm just going through my notes, so I apologize for the pauses. Um, and then we moved on to object work. Um, this was another thing where it's not uh, everyone's favorite. A lot of people don't do object work. So we played a game to sort of get around that. And basically, firstly, um, what the teacher told us is, you know, anything you do in a, sh in a scene should serve you. You shouldn't do something if it's gonna, you know, make the scene harder for you and detract from being in the scene with your scene partner. So to do, to practice scene work, basically, uh, we just got up on stage and were asked to do your morning routine. So half of the people went up on stage, the other people um, sat down and watched and everyone was allocated a person to observe. And uh, you basically just chose your morning routine. So whatever you do when you get up out of bed or you have a shower, you make a cup of coffee or whatever, you have that muscle memory. So it should be fairly easy just to enact that. And so we were doing that and then we mixed it up. So we did the morning routine then we, next round, we incorporated uh, an emotion. So just say, for example, um, you see something in your physical space that invokes an emotion, and then how does that make you react? And then the second time we did it, you um, had a bit of a thought bubble and uh, you saw something that triggered a, a memory from the past. Uh, and basically by the end of it, what we were doing was basically doing object work, but um, invoking an emotion and, and changing you know your feelings in the scene so the cool thing was it didn't really feel like object work because we were doing something that we're all familiar with and that was another tip you know so if you you want to do something in a scene that's um, some object work um, it's not cheating to pick something that you're familiar with and you do day in day out having said that the next day was a bit different with Susan but I'll, I'll get into that um, tomorrow basically we were thrown in the deep end to do object work that we had no idea what we we're doing um, what else did we do let me look let me look uh, my notes yep uh, I think that was yeah so that was everything it was characters emotions physicality and object work and basically the the key was just to as they say stick with your deal and then we finished off by playing scenes where um, two people went on the stage, um, were back to back, and you chose what your deal was, and I had to stick with it. And the, the good thing about this is, like, I know I suffer from this, and you see people doing this, you, you start a scene with something in your mind, then you see your scene partner doing something else, and straight away you just drop what you're doing to, to see what they're doing and, and make the scene work. But um, I think annoyance philosophy is all about being a little bit more selfish, sticking with your deal, and yeah, just make that decision and stick with it. So when we were running these scenes, um, the environments were totally different. So people would start their, their scene back to back. One person would be in the kitchen cooking, another person could be fishing. So it was <laughs> very weird. Like you had scenes that you, you wouldn't expect to be in the same um, environment. But it just made it work. And sometimes that contrast was actually quite funny. You'd have one person um, doing something outside, another person doing something inside, and you just had to make the scene work. But the cool thing was that no one's giving up uh, who they are. Because a lot of times in scenes, you see someone doing something, and then they sort of back out and like, oh, this doesn't make sense, and then they, they drop what they're doing. And I think what we like to see in scenes is commitment. You make a commitment to play a character, you stick with that character. And so that was all. That was all for Tuesday. And to add on to that, we're actually lucky. We had a two-hour session with Mick, um, the, the founder of Annoyance. And basically, we just ran a lot of scenes. I was actually really impressed. This guy knew all of our names like within 10 minutes. I don't know how he did it. don't know, maybe he researched us beforehand, but uh, that was super impressive. And basically, he just watched us do scenes and gave us all tips afterwards. And the main theme he had was all around just mixing it up like firstly having the courage to um, be specific with your choices and stick with it but then he was all about just mixing it up so you know if you play a, uh, a weird character next scene um, play a character closer to you 
Um, if you play a nice character, next scene play a mean character and mix up the, the rhythm, the speed, the sound, the volume of, of who you're playing. Um, yeah, the bit of advice he had for me was, you know, uh, mix up your voice and a tip to do this is when you come into a scene, make a sound, a different sound each time and whatever sound you make, uh, that informs your character's voice. And the other thing he mentioned which I found interesting was he, he said don't do any time references in scenes. And I thought this was pretty interesting because um, one thing I think we're taught is to add um, layers and add uh, background to a scene like to, to point out how long have you known this character um, and that adds layers but his view was you know if you're thinking about time and referencing how long you've known someone or how long you've been somewhere you're really not in the scene and you're almost trying to control the scene by um, you know saying this is how long I think we've known each other um, so it's just a bit of feedback he had, basically, uh, you know, minimise time references and that's it. These clips are going a bit longer, 11 minutes, so um, that's all for Tuesday. I'll uh, see you next time and post up something on Wednesday. Ciao.